Hey guys, what's up? It's Ripe again. In today's video, an entitled neighbor constantly spies on me through the windows and complains to the police that I am playing illegal and violent video games. When the police does not do what she wants, she gets a SWAT team sent to my house and claims that I took hostages. Here is what happened. Let's dive right into the story. So I want to get into the meat of the story, but I just want to paint the scene for everybody else to be in my shoes. I am a full adult male with his own home and mortgage. I want to make that clear because I know many times when Karens complain about violent games, it is because there is like a kid playing them or something. Also, I don't have the most money in the world, so I don't have air conditioning in my house and in the summer it can get hot. I do the normal thing of opening a window to let in a nice breeze instead of sitting in a hot room with stale air. The Karen in question lives next door to me and calls to the police against me are nothing new around here. She is a very nosy person and feels the need to always roam around my property and peek in my windows. Now my windows in my living room are behind me and my TV is in front of me, so I cannot see Karen behind me but she can sure see what I am doing. As the title gives away, I'm a fan of playing video games and my genre of choice is the online multiplayer games where you run around with guns shooting people. At the time of this event I was playing a lot of Counter Strike Global Offensive. The routine would basically go that she would hear the game because she was on my lawn where she shouldn't have been and then see in the windows that I was playing a shooter and call the police to report me for playing mature adult violent games, supposedly, where everybody in the neighborhood could see them. I spoke to the police about it twice but I know she called way more about it. Each time it boiled down to the same thing. The police would see that I was not playing too loudly and was not playing it in the view of anybody that was not snooping in my backyard and also I was a grown adult that could play anything I wanted. Finally the police warned her to stop calling them about the same thing over and over because there was nothing they could do about it. She then moved on to yelling through my window at me when I played calling me violent and everything wrong with this country. All because of how I want to spend my free time in my own house. I was beyond done with this woman and wanted to just get a little bit of revenge. If she wanted to complain about me being a nuisance then I might as well go and be one. I turned my TV brightness all the way up so what was on the screen could be seen by her very clearly when she was snooping. Then I turned the volume up to high and proceeded to sit on my ass and play video games. I did turn once and see her yelling at me through the open window but I could not even hear her over the gunfire in my game. That also meant that I did not hear or notice her getting on the phone and calling the police again. Only this time she apparently told them something very different. From what I was told after the events she called them saying that I was an active shooter and had a hostage in my house. She already heard shots fired and was worried that I had killed somebody. A call like that forced the police to call in the SWAT team because where I live that's the protocol for a hostage situation and a dangerous gunman. I did not know anything until my door was busted down and a smoke grenade was thrown into my living room. I started hacking and had guns pointed at me in seconds. I felt somebody basically sitting on my lower back and putting me into handcuffs. They were asking me where the guns were and where I had the hostages. I could not answer though because of the smoke I breathed in. I don't know how it affects everybody but I'm severely asthmatic. Because of that I was taken to the hospital, cuffed to the bed and given medicine and oxygen until I could properly breathe again. Only then I could explain that I did not have any guns and I was just playing a video game. I told them that they could see past reports from Karen reporting me for playing the game and how she knew I did not really have a gun or shoot anybody. It was just her really effed up way of getting revenge on me for getting revenge on her. A sweep of my house proved that I didn't have anything dangerous and the police let me go home. Having a SWAT team come when not needed is a pretty serious offense and I'm sure anybody who looks into current events knows that it has become something of a prank that is getting cracked down hard on. Before I get into that though I want to talk about how in regards to the swatting I decided to sue Karen for medical bills and emotional damage. I don't have healthcare that covers a full visit to the emergency room and I wanted her to pay everything the insurance was not going to. I also wanted her to be responsible for emotional damage because a SWAT team coming in ready to possibly kill me causes some trauma. 
For the civil stuff, she ended up owing me $1,500 for the hospital trip and I was awarded another 10k for emotional damage and some damage that ended up being done to my house from the team having to do their thing. Like a new front door, because the one they kicked in obviously cannot be used anymore. As for criminal though, it was an entirely different case between her and the state. Like I said, they were not happy about people doing this kind of thing because of how dangerous it is and how much money and resources get put into it. Due to all her previous complaints and actions, it was found by a court that she was guilty of calling in a false report on purpose in order to get the SWAT team into my house. They gave her two years in jail with parole possibility after a year served. She honestly couldn't believe that she was getting in trouble for all of this and told the judge that I should be getting punished too for playing those kinds of games. That it was clearly my fault because how was she supposed to know the video game was not real gunfire? Keep in mind, the game has more sounds than just gunfire and no adult is gonna confuse real guns and the sound of a game they listened to and complained about a dozen times. I was just glad that I was not gonna have to deal with her for a year at the minimum and was gonna spend some of the money on making sure that it didn't happen again. The first thing I did was gating in my yard so that no more Karens could go snooping in my windows. The second was that I was gonna buy myself an air conditioner so I would not need to have my windows open in the summer and the noise of the game sleeking out. I know that it was not my fault but the experience made me a little paranoid about both of these things. I was scared for months to touch my video games because they were now just attached with that horrible memory. She almost ruined my favorite hobby and entertainment because she had to be an a-hole about the entire thing. I know that getting my petty revenge was not the best idea looking back, but in that moment I was angry and just wanted to get even. I like to think that even if I didn't do that, she would have called eventually claiming the same thing. All I know is she is gone for now and once she is back, I'm gonna do everything I can to avoid her. And yeah, ripe stars, I gotta say, I am very happy in this story that Karen finally faces some consequences for her stupid behavior. But then again, even though it was completely uncalled for to call the SWAT team on OP, I also don't really understand why he couldn't simply use headphones. That would have been much easier, but probably Karen would have still complained because she can see the violent video games through the windows. Either way, let me know in the comments what you are playing at the moment and what is your favorite game. The next one is titled, My car got vandalized and I got revenge. Jonathan, name changed, and I had been casual friends since elementary school. I say casual because I treated him as a friend, but he would constantly bully and ostracize me in front of our friend group. He dumped pig poop in my shoes, stealing from me, lying to teachers to get me in trouble, etc. Just an all-around total dick since birth, really. But he was friends with my friend, so the little guy was always stuck to the heel of my shoe. Enter high school, senior year. Jonathan and I had drifted apart years before, but we were still on acquaintance terms and had similar friends. During that time, I experimented with weed once. Literally just one or two tokes of a J at a friend's place, but to some people, especially in high school, that makes you the burnout queen. Jonathan was one of those people. Jonathan also loved making people's life miserable every chance he got. It was a genuine hobby of his, so when he found out I had smoked, he was in heaven. He took it as a personal invitation to begin tormenting me harder than ever before. And that is when I started to notice the dents in my car. At first it was small, a tiny ding here, some trash on the windshield there. However, I quickly realized that I was being targeted and I knew he was the only one capable of that kind of BS. At first I did the reasonable thing, I went to the school. I let them know that someone was vandalizing my car and that I had a strong suspicion it was Jonathan. Simple as that. So they said they would handle it, let me go and call for Jonathan to come to the office. Great, I thought. They will take care of it, right? It's all settled now, right? Wrong. So damn wrong. The next day I was called back to the office and there was a security guard sitting there with the principal. They sat me down and explained that Jonathan had informed them that I was dealing drugs at the school. What the hell? I have not once in my effing life to this effing day ever sold drugs of any kind. It is just not my thing, but of course the almighty school policy states that this accusation alone is grounds for expulsion and that's exactly what the principal was planning to do. What? So I come to you, Mr. Principal, accusing a student of bullying me, he tells you an obvious lie to deflect the blame onto me and you buy it? And he gets off scot-free? 
No way. I immediately defended myself to this water brain principal and his lackey, explaining that Jonathan's accusation was an obvious lie, but they were not having it. We got a zero tolerance policy for drugs of any kind and we take these issues seriously. Okay, so that did not work and now I am facing expulsion months before graduating. They gave me about a week to get Jonathan to rescind his accusation or I would be expelled. So fair. Time to take matters into my own hands. Again, I tried the reasonable thing first. I called Jonathan and told him that we both knew the truth and that if he did not resent his false accusation, I would F his life up. Damn, if I had to, I would get lawyers involved. Jonathan of course laughed at me and told me to F off. Hmm, okay. I tried to play nice, but from there I did what any high school ganja goddess would do in this situation. I played dirty. The night of that phone call to Jonathan, I put all the preparations in place. It was so easy. All I had to do was tape a camcorder to the sun visor in the front seat of my car, park in the school lot and hit record. See, Jonathan knew I had accused him of vandalizing my car, but I had a feeling that he was too stupid and evil to stop. So I waited and for the first couple of days, nothing. I would sift through the hours of footage each night and come up empty. I started to get worried that Jonathan was onto me and the plan would not work. But then it happened. I was fast forwarding through yet another day's worth of video when suddenly a body shifts into frame directly in front of my car. It is Jonathan. I watch as he and some friend of his stand there inspecting my car looking for something to F up that would not get them in trouble. Such a-holes. And then he does it standing directly in front of the hidden camera face in full view. He spits a giant rope of snot directly onto the hood. Checkpot. I could hardly wait to get to the school the next day. First thing I near sprinted to the principal's office and handed off the video in a pretty yellow envelope. Then I walked off to class with the biggest justice boner I've ever experienced. Later that day, the principal called me down for a final chat. Apparently after they had shown Jonathan the footage, he had a massive moment of clarity and realized that I actually had not been dealing drugs. What a shocker. And due to the spitting, unfortunately I didn't get footage of him actually damaging my car, Jonathan would receive a two week suspension. Wow. So for the next fortnight Jonathan was gone and I got to float around campus like the true weed empress I deserved to be. No way Jonathan. And the next one is titled, I will destroy you if you cut in line. A few years ago while traveling in India, I decided to try a 10 day silent mediation retreat. The retreat was out in the middle of nowhere and home to a large colony of the biggest and fiercest ants I've ever seen. As this was a Buddhist retreat, no measures were taken to get rid of them and they were everywhere. When you turned on a tap, ants came first and then the water. That's not hyperbole by the way. A couple of days in, my hard earned tranquility was shattered by another mediator who felt it his right to cut in front of me while waiting for our evening meal. The dude even had the audacity to give me a little smirk as he did it knowing I could not call him out on it. I could only glare impotently at the back of his cute jumping head. I was livid to say the least, in the following mediation sessions I could not concentrate on the practice. I could not think of nothing but revenge, luckily I had a lot of time to think and slowly a plan emerged. The following day while making a myself a cup of chai, I surreptitiously pocketed a large handful of sugar which I later dispensed into a half full water bottle creating a lovely syrup. At the next mediation session I made sure I was last in line to enter the building. Before you enter the building you remove your flip flops and leave them outside. I made sure to mark my enemy's footwear as he removed them and when I was alone outside I joyfully doused them in syrup, being careful to avoid any innocent victim's shoes. After a few hours of peaceful mediation we be all began leaving the building. Doubts had started entering my mind. What if it didn't work? What if he only has sticky flip flops? Not the worst outcome but still, however I was in luck, my plan had worked. His flip flops were now a writhing mass of angry sugar fueled ants, his face was priceless. Shock, horror, complete confusion, he broke his vow of silence instantly but it was in Hindi so I'll never know what he said. The tone was disbelief though, he tried vainly to gingerly pick one up but was fended off by the gallant soldier ants with their massive jaws. He eventually found a stick with which to hook them with but that failed as well as the ants started to climb down the stick frightening him into dropping it, he left barefoot and perplexed. Victory was mine and I could return to my mediation satiated. The next one is titled, F with my family, F your hangers, dude. 
This story is about my mother's second husband. She married him when I was about 12. They were married for about 15 years. Bob was slash is one of those people who are heavily into his religion and expects that he should be the head of the house. Bob was borderline financially, spending money they didn't even have and emotionally abusive to her and even got physical with my younger brother a few times before my mother and I stopped him. Some of Bob's greatest hits were the following. Number one, telling me he was going to take my car that I paid for and wasn't in his name when his AC blew even though I was driving it to and from school and work and I hit the keys. Second, Bob worked at a chain fast food place and would expect me to work washing dishes off the books to help keep his labor numbers down. One of those live to work types, they fired him eventually because he is really bad at managing people. Number three, he had two young children from a previous marriage. He wouldn't tell anyone when they were coming and just drop it on us one to two days before and he would just expect my mom or I would care for the children. More than once I told him I was working and that he needed someone there for them when I got home from school because I needed to be at work. He just would not show up though, leaving me with the choice to call in to my job, which paid my expenses as well as contributed to the household expenses because he was so bad with money, or leave two children under five home alone. Then he would be pissed when he got home because I was a teen and needed to do what he said even if that meant losing a day's pay. Number four, he was obsessed with hangers. He had this weird thing about how he only wanted a certain type of hanger for his clothes. If anyone else used this type of hanger he would get pissed and be in a mood for days over hangers. Of course, as soon as they were married, he didn't do laundry again, but everyone was expected to save his hangers for his laundry. So, after I married off and my brother graduated high school, my mom decided to leave him. My brother was working for Bob's family, manufacturing business at the time. Bob had refused to work there until after being fired from the fast food chain and only was a supervisor for lower level employees like the cleaning crew. When my mother decided to leave, she asked my brother to help her move. He agreed and cleared the time off. She decided it was in her best interest to not tell Bob she was leaving until it was done. He wasn't blindsided, he knew she was going to do it, but she didn't want him to help with it because he was a massive control freak. My brother secured the time off and all was well. Somehow Bob found out why he wanted the time off. The night before she is set to move out he tells my brother that he didn't approve the time off and if he wasn't at work the next morning he was fired. Then he told her that if she wanted to move out so badly she could do it alone. My brother had bills of his own and had to choose. So my mom called me that night in tears and I told her to tell my brother to go to work. My husband and I were able to find professional movers and hire them for the same day at like 6 a.m. We got so lucky, plus she had been buying furniture and things for a bit, so half of her stuff was at my place anyway, so the movers picked up her stuff and then we went over to Bob's place to get her and the rest of her stuff. The only thing my mom really was taking besides personal items were her clothes. She even left the furniture she came into the marriage with. However, she hadn't packed her closet clothes because she was working in a professional setting and needed them. I told her to go deal with the movers and I would finish up packing her clothes. Here is the petty revenge. I swapped every single one of Bob's hangers. I even went into the coat closet and took the ones there and the laundry room where the unused ones were kept. I left all of my mom's regular plastic hangers so he wasn't left with nothing. I even hung up his clothes all on the bed hangers. Because my mom literally left with her personal items and the clothes on her back, he didn't have a leg to stand on. Any person he tried to complain to about the hangers shut him down immediately, which pissed him off to no end because he hates being told that he is wrong or not having his butt kissed. And this ripe stars is what you call nuclear hanger revenge.
And guys, with this, we have reached the end of the video. However, if you cannot get enough of my content, then either check out my binge watch playlist, which has thousands of hours of content. And if you still don't have enough, please don't forget to either check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash ripe YouTube or subscribe to my membership program here on YouTube for exclusive videos that you won't find anywhere else. Thank you so much and I will see you again tomorrow.